What's going on everyone? Kevin from Epic Gardening here. I'm here with Bridget Romstead of San Diego Seed Company, which has a, a lot of cool creds to its name. You were telling me yeah. as we came in, uh, the first and only, I think, certified organic urban seed company in the United, United States. States. Yep. In the US, yep. which is crazy. So behind us is a garden or farm unlike probably most you'll ever see me cover because none of these plants, or at least almost none of them, are being eaten right away. So that's pretty next level compared to a lot of the stuff you'll have seen me do because I'm growing mostly to eat and I think a lot of home gardeners are growing to eat but I think we could definitely mix in some elements of saving our own seed for sure. And as we walk through on explore all the different sections, you're gonna see us actually literally save some seed of eggplants. And then Bridget's gonna talk a lot about kind of why you might wanna do this yourself and why it's so beneficial to have a local seed producer in the city that you're in for all sorts of really interesting reasons. So stay tuned, we'll get into it. So we're walking in now. And how long have you been here, Bridget? Um, it's been about two years. We okay. bought the property about two years ago, and actually when we purchased it, there was no water back here, so we had to trench from the front to the back to get water. There was nothing back here but some dirt and some weeds. It's been a long journey of improving the soil and getting uh, the crops to a point where they really can produce, but now we're happy to say that we produce a huge amount of seed from this very small little lot, and we do trialing and breeding here as well. Gotcha. And how big, I know you said the property was an acre, but how big is the actual farm So it's section. about a quarter of an acre is the actual area that we grow on that is certified organic. Cool. Well, let's yeah. head on out there then. So these are something really cool to look at um, because these are some eggplants that we have been producing for seed. These are called Black Beauty. Oh, it's a classic one. Yeah, it's a total yeah. classic. Um, oh, those are looking beautiful as well. Yes, they are gorgeous. Uh, you can see we've got them all crazy staked up and uh, we've actually cut some of them back. Uh, it is a classic, but what's important is that when you have a classic heirloom seed, that you have it, you, you create it so that it is regionally adapted to your area. Right. If somebody is producing it on a huge scale, um, somebody who's growing it in Maine are going to encounter very different issues than we are going to encounter here in the American Southwest. So we're actually growing these plants to become regionally adapted to our, our conditions. The things that are notable and very important to growing in, in San Diego or Southern California is that we are much hotter for a longer period of time, we have less water, and we have different pest issues. So we are adapting the seed to become a better performer for our particular microclimates. And, and how are you actually doing that? Is it just a matter of producing over generations? And selection. Right. So we will select over time only the ones that are the most prolific and the most productive. That's a very rudimentary form of breeding that's taken place in agriculture since its conception. But it is something that has been forgotten over time because we have these really big agro businesses that provide us with seed. That very intimate part with agriculture hasn't been as important and we're hoping to be a part of changing that. So we have these really cool, beautiful, these are obviously for eating. Just to give you a sense of scope, this is perfect stage for eating. Let's find one for seed. This is much too tough to eat. Let's take a feel of that. Oh yeah, that's like almost rock, rock hard. hard, yeah. And it also looks like a giant sort of fig or yep. avocado type of look. So this is well overripe, which is yep. what you want as yep. a uh, as a seed producer, right? Yep. For things like tomatoes, we actually wait until they're almost rotting. Mm -hmm. And that is when the seed is most viable. So what we'll do is we'll actually take these guys and I can take these guys up right here. So we'll take these, Okay. And what I can do is I can cut these guys open, I can show you what the seed looks like inside, and then show you how we get it from this to the seed that is actually in your seed pack. Hell yeah, let's do it. Sweet, let's go. All right, well, we are here with some big ol' honkin' rock solid eggplants that kind of have like a green, brown, yellowy color. Yeah, they're way past ripe. You would, try, yep. to try to eat these would be, ugh, It terrible. would be a nightmare, probably. Yeah. Uh, but we're gonna chop inside of them, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go ahead and do it. All right, so I'll show you. What are we looking for from a like seed viability standpoint? We're looking for fully developed seeds. So okay. we really want seeds um, that are uh, that are full, that are spanning the whole length of the lower part of the eggplant. So we just started getting to them right there. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, so you can see 
you know, it's just like, um, for example, cucumbers. You eat cucumbers yeah. when the seeds aren't developed. Right. If you eat a mature cucumber, they're huge honking seeds in there. Yeah, because so we all know planting the, the it's, what's weird is like as a gardener, you get the seed packet, you see what the seeds look like, you don't connect that in your head sometimes yep. to actually, yep, that, that came from the plant circle. that you grew, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, look, the, the chomping down on these when you're eating them would be, would be pretty terrible. That would be, here, let me just see that sort of the, uh, but from a seed production standpoint, I mean, this is beautiful. They're perfect. They're like, they're huge. They're they're yeah, those are fully developed. They're pretty tough. Yes, <laughs> yeah. You'd probably break a tooth if yeah. you weren't careful. You do. Here, I'll chop this one. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't take off the finger. Yeah, it's been done before. And what's really cool about these is we can actually grade them um, by weight. So the ones that are lighter. Yeah are not viable because they don't have a fully grown embryo. Yep, that and makes sense. So it's sense. a really easy way to figure out what's going on. Do you do that then in water? Um, you can do it in water is yeah. a really good way. It's actually kind of like using it like a, when you're gold mining. Sure, panning. Right? Yeah. Yes, panning the seeds. Yes, it's my gold. Yeah, yeah. And look at that, see? That's cool. All right, so we've chopped these bad boys up. As a seed producer, what's our next step? Like, what are we trying to do after this? So these are considered wet seeds, which are different than dry seeds, which yeah. are things like amaranth and different flowers and things like that. We actually have to get the seed out of here. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. We prefer to actually cut the core of the seeds out and put it in a food processor. Mm. And that breaks up all the pulp. And then what that'll do is it'll allow the seeds to fall away from the pulp. The good ones will sink to the bottom. Okay. Why? Why right. do they sink to the bottom? Heavier, right? Because they're heavier, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're better seed. And then it's like panning for gold. We can simply pour okay. off all the gunk and the gook and keep the good stuff. And then the food processor doesn't shred good seed? So we have a food processor that has a specialized blade. It's uh. not necessarily for seed processing, but there's so much material in here mm. that even if it does destroy some of the seeds, yeah. they will not be they will not be in the finished product right so there's probably better tools out there we're just too small to have them right quite also yet. also eggplant as a plant I would imagine this is a kind of an inconvenient way for a seed to be produced for a seed grower I would imagine right yes there's some things that are way easier there's some yeah. things that are way that are more difficult like peas beans I mean that's yep. cake right and that's something to think about people always ask well, why are seeds so expensive yeah it's a very lengthy process just to get it out of the soil and, and into seed form and then you have to have the equipment to be able to get it from this into a seed packet. Right. And that can is, be timely and expensive. Yeah, for sure. And that's actually what we're right about to see. In the garage, we're gonna go in, we're gonna process some of these eggplants, and we're gonna see if we can get it to as close as we can get to a final product, right? Yeah, yeah, right. we will, for sure. Cool. So I'm actually just gonna try to cut away a lot of the excess fiber and try to get the seed. Um, as you can tell, the seed tends to stay right in the middle. And so I'll see I'm cutting this out. Right, yeah. It's really quite beautiful. You actually can, we were doing a bunch of these the other day, you can kind of peel them apart and see like how they form. The little clusters. This, yeah, this really beautiful shape. But of course, we don't have time for that. So we don't have time. Um, for that. I'm going to just chop this up and it's going to get stuck in here. And then going into blend mode. Going into blend mode. And we've got some pretty cool contraptions to the left and the right as well that we're going to get into, right? These two um, were patented in 1889. No way. Yes way. That's old school. Yes. How did you get them? The Johnny Seed Company. Oh wow. No way. The relics. But still completely applicable mm -hmm. to the industry. The, you know, the technology hasn't really changed. And what's great about that is it's low tech, low investment. I didn't spend $30,000 on those machines. And they, they can easily be fixed. They are very basic in their, they're, they're run off a set of cams. Gotcha. So it's basic, you know. It's an 1885 tech. Do you know, do you have any idea out of, let's say these two big black beauties, roughly how many seeds you'll get or, or how many packets of seeds I guess you'll get? Uh, it's really hard to say because, you know, some can produce more seeds than others, obviously. For the sake of knowing about a home gardener who wants to save seeds, you get so many seeds, much more than you can ever use. Mm -hmm. And that's where seed sharing comes into play and things like that. Okay, I have to add a little bit of water. So if we're doing eggplants at home, yeah. are you just putting in, is there some ratio or are you just putting no, it in at a couple inches? The water is going to just protect the seed a little bit so that I'm not, because what I want to do is just make a really sloppy, gunky mess yeah. that then I can separate the good seed from the bad seed. And rock. Let's 
take a look. So we're just processing some seeds in here. If you look at the side, you can see the juice, the pulp, and the seeds yep. have for sure separated out. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. And what's incredible, you know, is these blades are so tiny. The, the contact they're going to make with the seed is going to be very minimal. So they almost any. might like knock it out of the way of the actual blade. Yeah, yeah. it's going to do more of just separating the solids from the two different solids. Mm -hmm. So um, I use a little specialized seed equipment, just a <laughs> you know, colander. This will help me get most of the junk off. And then so there I'll, goes most of the pulp, there goes most of the juice. Yeah, and then right. follow me outside, we'll, we'll rinse it and that's the coolest part. Let's do it. I love this part. So I'm just going to, I'm just rinsing off. See, it didn't get all the chunks, but that's fine. I can always rent it again. But I'm gonna rinse off these big pieces. Get these chunks off. Do -do -do. So that's probably going to warrant another run through, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Especially for the, the the backyard growers, you don't have to get every seed because there's so much. Right, you're not growing enough eggplant for even the amount you get out of one seed, right? Yeah, or it's, one it's, plant. It's, it's, it's incredible. So as you can see, all the big stuff is floating. And what I do is I just float up a little bit more water. Give it a second to settle. Nature is quite incredible in the mechanisms that it is used to decide what is viable, what is not. That little tiny bit of weight difference is what is gonna help us separate off good seed and bad seed, which to me is incredible. So right. we'll take it, we don't waste any water here, so we'll do this in my lesson here so this water doesn't get wasted. And so this is called decanting. Uh, it's like a one nice little wine. It's kind of like being a um, gold miner. Yeah. Yeah, so. we're panning for, for a different type of gold, right? Yeah, eggplant gold. So anything that's flopping off into the ground right now, you just don't care about because it's too light to be viable it's in the first light. place. too light. We don't want any of that anyways. It's not good seed. You always want to be careful at the end not to blow your load. But look at that. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Look at that, guys. That method. You guys saw what we did earlier, just chopping. From chopping to throwing it in the, the food processor to just simply adding some water and pouring it out. It's pretty well sifted yep. and organized, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, so that's pretty incredible. So now the most important step, which is so important, people often hurry the next step and then they've lost you know, a whole year of work or so, or so um, is making sure that you dry it thoroughly. So we'll pour this through a screen to get any extra, excess water off. And then you can simply just put a box fan on top of it, leave it for 72 hours, bada bing, bada boom. We don't live in a very humid climate, so you don't have to worry as much. But it is important that before you store it, the seeds are completely dry. Mm -hmm. That's actually what causes a lot of um, seed to go bad, is the moisture. Gotcha. Not necessarily the age of the seed, but if it's expo exposed to moisture, then you got problems. So right. let's go look at some dried seed. Let's do it. Here we are with the high-tech fan. What? <laughs> What's under that fan? Gold, baby. So, <laughs> uh, right here we have, uh, this is eggplant seed that's been drying. As a rule of thumb, we try to tell people to let it dry at least for 72 hours. We have to go above, above and beyond that for quality purposes, but the point is, is it should be thoroughly dry. If you grab one little individual eggplant seed, and you try to like bend it, it should not, it should have no flexibility. You can use desiccant packages when you store this to pull out any additional moisture, but the product itself should be completely dry. That's talk, you're talking about like those silica yeah, packages, right? That that you that you get in like shoe boxes. Everything. Yeah. I have all my friends save them all the time. <laughs> it's a weird request, but um, so now we have a dry seed crop, and now we have to clean off any last impurities, little bits of eggplant that is dried in there. And we actually have a specialized piece of equipment that does that. That is this guy here. This is called a clipper. This is an incredible piece of equipment. 
it has not changed in its uh, process since it was invented way back when. Actually, the one we have out there is an older version of this. Um, this is just a newer one that we have. And so I'll get the screens all set up and we'll give it a whirl and then we'll have clean, dry seat at the end. Okay, so we have uh, my prized possession here, my clipper. This is a, a seed separator. It works by screens and by air to separate good seed from bad seed, take dust, dirt, all that stuff off. So what will happen is I have some good dry seed here. I'll put that into this. It'll slowly fall through. The top screen will take off any really big particles. This one right here. Yep. And then the bottom screen will allow for the good stuff to fall to the bottom. And it, it has to pass through an airstream first, which is what gets all that clean stuff. Okay. So if you yes. look here, you'll see. And you'll see how pieces that are chunked together. Yep. Those aren't making it through. Yep, they're floating down. Yep. So guys, they float down to here, they fall into this trough, and then they just drop off the machine. So that Regent knows those ones are just not viable, or they're actually just like dirt or some sort of particle. I can go back through and, and kind of rub those if they're chunked together. Off, they're just like adhered, but it's like two seeds. Yep. Yeah. And then other stuff is getting blown out of the clipper right here, right? Yep. And so, I can actually adjust the airflow. And you'll see how some of yep, them are getting out. Yep. Yep. You can see a plant on the ground. Again, these are all those too light, no endosperm in there, non-viable yep. seeds. Anything that was a little bit too heavy to almost not get blown off, but makes it right here, mm -hmm. gets fallen into this spot, which would be a B lot. So this is stuff that's somewhat iffy, so this won't get sold but this may get replanted our, on our farm. Gotcha. And then the top quality seed falls down here below. Now let's take a look at the A plus, A quality, or the, I guess the A lot. Yep, so this is the seed that's the most uniform because it fell through the seat, through the screens, which are incredibly uniform, obviously. Sure. They also made it past the airflow, which helped us decide size, uh, weight-wise that they're viable. Yep. Um, and then they, they fall down below. This is awesome. Let's yeah. take a look. Let's get a little like pinch full of them. Let's check out the quality. Yeah, I mean these look like eggplant seeds to me. Yeah. When you have the A lot, at this point, are you just straight up putting them in the seed packets? No. Or is there something else to do? So then they have to go through quality control testing. So uh -huh. they have to go through germination testing. That's where we test to make sure that there's a, ger a good germ rate. Um, our germ rates are well above what the federal standards are. Most, what, what are they? Um, it depends by the variety, but the federal standards for some things are like 60%, 70%, which as a gardener, you don't want seven out of 10 seeds to sprout. Right. You want nine or almost 10. Mm -hmm. So we do quality testing that way. And so let's say I do a germ test on these and I'm only getting 70, seven out of 10 seeds are only sprouting. Well, then I know I need to run it through here with a higher wind velocity to even further grade my seed. Okay. I also have other equipment that I can use as well. And then there's also a vigor test, so you want to see how quickly the seeds sprout. One of the greatest secrets about buying local seed and what makes it so amazing is that because I'm processing it right here and doing the packaging, this seed, this fresh seed that was process two weeks ago might be in city farmers in their nursery which is right down the street within the next week that doesn't happen with any other seed company because they're buying in huge quantities and then it takes them a long time to get it from seed form to packet form to their retailers so there's a very short loop with our company right. which is what what being hyper local is about so yeah we'll also test these for seed vigor which makes sure that they pop up uniformly and quickly that has a lot to do with age so the newer the seed um, the quicker you know, the more spry the seed is. Mm -hmm. um, and once it passes all of those quality control tests, then it goes into our packets, then it gets sold either online or at one of our many retailers. At San Diego Seed Company .com. Yep. <laughs> all right, what are we looking at here? This looks like a sort of a Plinko machine looking thing. Yeah, this is a really neat uh, piece of equipment that was actually built with um, some friends of ours over at Dovetail Design, shout out to them. Um, they helped me build this machine, it's called a 
aspirator and basically it uses air suction to separate seed from um, good seed from bad seed depending on weight. Um, basically seed falls through here. These little Plinko like plates allow good seed to either get caught by the suction and land over here, or I'm sorry, bad seed gets, gets sucked up because it's lighter and lands here. Mm -hmm. And then good seed will make it because it's so heavy through all of these tunnels down to here. Okay. So we'll give it a run. Right now I've got, um, this is some Sunflower Titan, which is a seed that we started producing. It makes massive heads. Yeah, this is a huge, very thick seed. Yeah. And you can see it's very dirty. Look, I want the viewers yeah, to see, the like, there's so much, you know, just naturally occurring wood chips and things from when we harvested it. Mm -hmm. um, we can't sell that like that in a seed packet, so we gotta clean it. Mm -hmm. And this is how we're gonna do it. Vacuum on. If we look over here, there's seeds, and then there's like just junk in there. Um, just a bunch of nonsense. Just a bunch of nonsense. And then here we have. Yeah, let's take that out there. Beautiful, perfect. Seeds. Oh wow! Yeah. There's no sticks. There's no rocks. There's no nothing in there. And you would use the aspirator for large seeds then? Um, or? Yeah, I wouldn't do anything too delicate because it's a little bit hard to adjust. You can adjust the suction with this. Mm -hmm. This is usually, a, a, we call it a pre-cleaning tool. So once I get my stuff harvested from the field and I take out the biggest chunks that I can, then I can easily run it through here and, and get the bulk of it cleaned. Then I can take it and I can run it into my clipper. And this, what's incredible about this technology is this is no different than what our ancestors have been doing as far as using winnowing techniques where they actually use the wind to separate seed by weight by processing or shaking the seed into the wind where the wind blows off. Before we got this piece of equipment and before we got that piece of equipment, that was our primary mode of cleaning our seed. We would actually stand on the west side of our property where the wind really blows through, you felt it, uh -huh. um, and we would use these big metal bowls and it would be a matter of letting the wind blow and using the seed, tossing the seed down and letting the wind pull off the bats. Yeah, nature's vacuum basically, yes. right? That's it guys, I mean, there's a lot more. I'll probably be back here because you're just down the road, but we're hanging out in the office. As you can see, there's a bunch of San Diego Seed Company seed here. How many different varieties do you actually grow and, and sell? Um, well, we we carry about 160 varieties, but um, some things we can't do here because we actually don't, don't get cold enough. Right. Um, but on our farm, we've produced at least 50% of those varieties, and then we have contract growers that do it for us as well. So gotcha. it is a team effort with us here at the seed company, which is common with seed companies, um, but they are all in areas with microclimates similar to ours, which is what's important. Gotcha. Are they San Diego, San Diego County? or A lot of San Diego, yeah. them, but we do also have some growers in Visalia and things like that. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, because it's, I mean, although it's named San Diego Seed Company, it's really just growing things for the climate that is here, which is also elsewhere. We really right? care about our urban growers, our small space growers. We really care about drought tolerance and mm -hmm. we really care about flavor. Yeah. And that's what a lot of seed companies aren't paying attention to. That's what we want to do. Um, so that's the future that we're moving into. Nice, cool. Yeah, well, if you guys want to check out Bridget's stuff, it's, I think it's all San Diego Seed Company, but why don't you tell everyone like where they can yeah, find all your uh, stuff? Yeah, so um, you can find all of our seeds at retailers. we got a long list of that online. You can also order from us online. We do sell in bulk online, which is great. If you're a small-scale grower, we'd love to provide you with seeds. Uh, we do give a 100% satisfaction guarantee. We want to make sure you're happy. Um, and then we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. We, we try to be everywhere. Yeah, but it's hard. It's hard. not enough time. It's hard to do, yeah. It's hard yeah. to do for sure. So, awesome, cool. thanks, Thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah, this was awesome, guys. 
If you'd like, like I said, check it out. I've been growing San Diego Seed Company stuff. I would say like maybe half my seeds. Cool! Now. Yay! And uh, the yarrow. Let's see. I have this. I have the calendula. I have the. I actually bought from the local. I think it was City Farmers. I bought as many pollinator style things as I could. Oh, so like great. Western yarrow. Cool. And, yeah. Fantastic. All that stuff. So we, we just got a bunch of new cool season stuff in. We're really trying to push people to grow in the cool season. Yep. They kind of forget. You uh, know? Yeah. Yeah. But man, I love cool season stuff. I so do too. We've got new tat soy and we have mustard and, and, and new greens that are available. Um, and a lot of our stuff now is certified organic. There you go, guys. So check it out. If you're in a climate that is similar to ours, I think this would be a pretty cool option. I certainly love them myself. So good luck in the garden, keep growing, and I'll see you in the next episode.